It's the third and final game of the series. Baseball under the sun. And the Dodgers going for the sweep here this afternoon against the St. Louis Cardinals. Today, the Dodgers are going for a series sweep against the St. Louis Cardinals, with whom current Dodger pitcher Joe Kelly is quite familiar. Six years ago, Kelly was wearing a Cardinal uniform competing against the Dodgers in the National League Championship Series in an epic matchup with everything on the line. Dodgers, of course, in a must-win situation as they were on Wednesday night. And tonight they're going to be sending out their best and baseball's best in Clayton Kershaw. So it's moments before game six. National League Championship Series 2013 elimination game as it turns out to be. Big game. There is a fall chill in the air and there's a bunch of electricity in this ballpark. Game six moments away. It's kind of watching the field and the anthem is played so we're standing for the anthem and then after the anthem almost everybody files back into the dugout and I look and there's Joe Kelly like right down in front of me and then there's over on our side there's Scotty Van Slyke and I'm wondering well how long will this go on one of the things that I started doing prior to that series once the national anthem was over I would just continue to stay on the line until I saw everyone from the opposing team leave I was kind of just trying to get a moral victory before the actual game started so he took it from there and started doing it I think I remember hearing a rumor that Joe had been staying out there and wanted to be the last person. And I just wanted him to recognize that I knew what was going on. Welcome back to Bush Stadium. Just moments away from the opening pitch, but about 12 minutes and counting into the standoff between Scott Van Slyke of the Dodgers and Joe Kelly of the Cardinals, both remaining in their positions from the national anthem, having a major standoff to see who will break first. I talked to Don Mattingly to see if the two knew each other, if what, perhaps they had a side bet, and Don Mattingly said to me, and I quote, listen, you can't talk to the guards at the Buckingham Palace, leave them alone. You know, I stand on the line, and I think someone was by me, I, I forget who it was, and you know, bumped me, he's like, hey, look, there's still, someone's still standing over there, so everyone left, and I was like, screw it, I'm still standing here, like, this is my thing, I invented this, like, this is something that I've been doing for two months, like, I stand on the line until everyone leaves, so if he's not leaving, I'm not leaving. We've been watching this now, and, and it continues even as the Cardinals have taken the field. This was probably, you know, 10 minutes after the anthem had already been done playing. I run right past Joe on my way out to take the field and throw my warm-up pitches before probably the biggest game of my life. And, uh, and then I see Joe standing out there still with his hand across his heart like he's saluting the flag. And then I look over there and I see Vance Slyke standing out there as well, and I'm like, Okay, we got a little standoff going here. Just knowing Joe, you know, the guy is, uh, is uh, up for any challenge. You know, he's very competitive, and I was fully prepared for that umpire to throw him out of the game, you know, and him just still be standing there in the seventh inning. That was my, you know, first good amount of time in the big leagues. You know, I made the postseason roster. You know you're on national TV, so. There is this thing that is going on, like, what am I doing? This is not, this is not good for me. This is, this shouldn't be. Uh, but then, like I said, you got your teammates, Adrian, who's got 10 years in the big leagues, yelling at you, just, if you come in the dugout, I'm gonna kill you, stuff like that. You know, one of the lengths that you go to is uh, to instill fear in somebody. And, uh, you know, you just let him know that uh, if, if he loses, he can never hear the end of it. Did you threaten Scott? I did let him know that his life depended on it. I had to. I would have been crucified if I came in. Rogers would put a padding helmet on Scott Van Slyke. I think that the fact that I had my teammates, you know, telling me, your fine's covered, you know, you won't get in trouble, lowered my anxiety. I recognized the level of anxiety that he was having. Joe Kelly's got to back down first. He's further out there. When you go into battle, you have to have a plan. And my plan was to be as close to the dugout as I can so that my anxiety level would, would not be as high as his. I remember looking back, and you know everyone's left in the dugout. I look back, and I see Mike 
who was our manager at the time, and you know he he's a very serious guy. Um, and I look back, and this is you know it's the playoffs, um, and he gives me a smile, and I, and I was like, all right, well, I think this is good. And then after the smile, he says, you better not freaking leave that line. That was a bluff. Honestly, I was waiting for any movement of the foot, and as soon as that happened, I was out. I saw my opportunity, I took it. I'm claiming victory. And the Dodgers celebrating in their dugout. I think Joe actually was the first one to move and, and, and get off the line, but then he came back, and that's when we, we figured we had won. Wow, what a bizarre start to game six. Even though I've moved, um, I definitely came back to my spot. Um, and at that point, you know, there's room for interpretation, I guess. I won the standoff because I was not the one that moved my feet towards the dugout first. <laughs> it was definitely one of those weird, awkward moments of baseball that probably will always be remembered.